welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. I'm RJ. <laughs> this is episode 151, 152? I don't remember. 151. It'll be on the header. Yep, there you go. And it's September 16th, 2017. Had a lot going on for the last couple of weeks. RJ's been off at rodeos. Um, we just had issues, haven't we? And I think mm -hmm. last week we missed um, podcasting altogether. So, and a week before that I just did like a walk around type. It was a little different. So, today we're trying to get back to it, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's start with in the barn stalls. Um, get two. Get, get two what? Two to be in the barn stalls. No. The little lamb. The doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, what about the day? We haven't discussed her. Huh. Oh, well, she's at a barn stall already. I know, that's what I'm saying. They're they're behind because we're behind and it's our fault. Oh. So we have two weeks to catch up on. Okay. Okay, so Bidet had her calf. Um it was kind of a pain. I had asked RJ to put up Bidet. We turned her out because she just wasn't progressing in labor, and so I thought maybe it was a false alarm. And RJ said he'd put her up when he got home from work. Well, work ended up being um, a big thing in itself. He didn't get home till 11 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, I go out, and Bidet is laying up here on the hill, and... She's in full-blown labor. So I thought, oh, I can get her to the stall. No. So she walked around out there. Um, she had some complications. Not bad complications. She just needed some help having it. Um, it's part zebu, so the legs are longer. So the legs hit first, and they came through okay. But then when the head got there, they're fat little heads. And she just could not push it out. So we ended up having to what's called pull the calf, but you just kind of help her, you know, have the head. Once she had the head, it was out, done. She did awesome. She had it, got it, doctored it, um, doctored it, mothered it, licked on it, all that stuff, cleaned it up. Um, we used the wagon to, I had to get my husband out of bed to help, and that was not, he was pretty. He was dead, to say the least, okay? But one thing I have learned, you cannot, in any form or fashion, pull a cap and hold a flashlight. And there's not street lights around here. You cannot do it in the dark. You can't feel what's going on, and it's like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> so, hence why Dad was um, called. So, yeah. We got it in the wagon, got it up to the barn, and... RJ, did you even see it till morning? Mm -hmm. He didn't even go out there. He came home, went to bed, and went out the next morning. So, yep. Little red thing. Yep. Cute as button. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, the day had her calf, which officially ends calving season. So, all of our births for 2017 that started in February are now done. So, from February to September, we had births. That's like our longest season ever, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, normally the cattle are like June and stuff, aren't they? I don't remember. June and July is normally when we end. So, because we want to start breeding the same time we do the sheep and that. So. Okay, and then um, we have some more little baby calves in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The twins are doing amazing, right? They just blend in now. Headbutt you around. Beat you up for a bottle. They're doing really good, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, all the little calves seem to have a little uh, runny nose they're passing around. It gets cool at night, and then it gets warm in the day, and so it is what it is, correct? We just doctor them as they go. Um, then we've got... The little lamb. We we have one of the lambs, Reba's baby, correct? Yep. And we're watching her. 
and she seems to be doing much better today. Um, we don't know if she's going to have an iron deficiency like Reba does or if this was just a passing thing because we wormed them and I'm thinking, I'm praying that hopefully she just had a, a heavy worm load and it took a toll on her. But we separate her off, let her eat, and she's up and actually out and grazing this morning, correct? Mm -hmm. So she's doing really good. We haven't, she's doing fine. She's weaker than the others, so. And Finny has started doing the same thing. But what we figured out is we forgot to worm the man pen. So Finny was wormed, and we plan on worming them. Hopefully today, um, if RJ has time before he goes to his rodeo, if not, then tomorrow, correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, night is down here. He'll be an easy one to do. And then the men have all started scuffling over the cooler weather. So, it gets interesting walking in there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, all right. The other thing going on in the barn stalls is breeding season has started, correct? Mm -hmm. um, now, we do have some seasonal breeders, and we've got some out of season breeders, as they're called. And the ones that are breeding right now are the Morenos and the Meat Sheep and the Dorsets. Those all breed out of season. And this year it is night. So night gets to um, play with the girls. Um, he's a good guy. He, he's, we worried the first year that we used him because of his bum leg, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it did not affect his performance at all. And I think part of it is is because we put him off by himself and there's no other men sheep around his pen when he's getting on his big piece, correct? If he had felt the need to scuffle with any others, I don't think he'd perform as good, do you? I don't know. But he breathes. Yeah, it works. Um, there's no men around, so... Last year, we had some that didn't perform as well because they were too busy headbutting through the fence. So, we rectified that this year, I hope. But, anyway. All right, anything else in the barn stalls? Finney's being separated and eaten by himself now so that he can gain his strength. Yeah. Might have to go out there and give him a shot of vitamin and stuff. But, he seems to be doing okay this morning and we leave him to eat. Before we do anything else. So. Anything else in the barn stall? Star should be coming home. I think we go pick her up Sunday. Um, anything else? No. I think we're good. Cats and their pen stuff up. It's a dog. What is he tearing it? He's clanking on the, uh, the kennel. On that All right. Gotcha. All right. Mending fences. We've got one strand of the barbed wire, but I don't have it up yet um, for the west fence. And it is the last part that we have to do. And RJ found out firsthand why we have to keep the cattle off the road. Yep. We'll discuss that in the farmhouse. Then, um, I've gone to, to fixing up just some stuff around here, cleaning up. We've got a couple of feeders that need new she, uh, things. Um, I have done the research on my new trellis system, so I haven't built it yet. So, mostly it's just cleaning up, getting things put where it needs to be right. The, um, head stall for the, um, sheep. I'm moving everything out to that old dog pen. The old dog pen, we call it a timeout pen, but it's too small really for anything to, I mean, even little Mickey being in there, he wouldn't have room to really move around or anything. So, um, it's just too small. So I've been storing stuff in there. The old pig feeder was already in there. The, the other barrel was already in there. Um, the head the sheep head stall or head gate is already in there. Um, I'm going to move the breeding panels in there after this year because they're already right by the door and I'm not going to move them off. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> um, so, 
but I cleaned up this stall here, fixed the gate. Um, the gate that RJ's been going through has a had a hole and the sheep could get in and out of it. And so I put a grate over it until we can get a new gate bought, which is better because we had a big old panel across there and it was too hard to get in and out. You had to open the gate and remove the panel. So, <laughs> but just little things, right? All right. Yarn harm. You're not saying a whole lot today. You're too busy eating breakfast. Um, I haven't done a whole lot. In the field. <laughs> in the fields, we brought in the last of the hay. We've got one more section. If we decide to cut it, we will cut it. But at this point, I'm not going to cut it if I don't have a way to transport it. So. Anything else? The garden. I'm gonna do go down and do a garden update today, just because I haven't done one in a couple of weeks. Um, so, and it'll also show you the pig's garden. I've got to get out there and harvest her garden. Believe it or not, she can't harvest it herself. I have no idea why. Maybe it's those opposable thumbs that elude her, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Just Our, give her a knife. She'll walk around <laughs> you. Yeah. There you go. All right. Sorry, I'm very yawny today. In the farmhouse, RJ, I'm here. you want to start with what's going on in the farmhouse? Where do I start? Well, two weeks ago, you just been working and roping, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Taking care of stuff, and then what happened two nights ago that kind of got everything off kilter? Well. I had a migraine, so I left work early. I wasn't really early, it was 9 o'clock. I saw stuff I needed to do. Then I don't even get a mile from there, and I hit a cow. Now, there's a backstory to the cow. The gentleman knew the cow was out. He knew that he had cattle out, not just one cow. There was a, another young man there, which RJ had thought was the owner. It looked like he was pulling out of his driveway, so RJ didn't have his brights on because there was another car there. You, you don't want to bright somebody. Um, he wasn't going a high rate of speed. He just came through a stop sign. Um, but he, it just looked like the guy was coming out of the driveway, correct? Mm -hmm. And so he slowed down and saw the guy, no problem. But what did it turn out that the guy was doing? Trying to find the cows. Trying to put up somebody else's cattle. He had come through earlier, just at dusk, when you could see them. About 20 minutes before. And he went up to the house, and he didn't live there. He went up to the house, and there was a babysitter there who was grandma. So they told her she called the owner of the cattle and they said, well, we're almost done. We'll be that way soon. Blah, blah, blah. Well, next thing you know, this kid has spent 20, 30 minutes out there trying to put up the cattle. This guy hasn't come and RJ comes down the road and he, he was aware that the gentleman was there, but it just looked like a parked vehicle waiting to pull out. So he figures, you know, checking the mail, waiting on something, you know, he slowed down, was cautious. Until the cow looked up, you can't see a black cow in the middle of the night. Um, you have to realize that when we say pitch black, there's no street lights. We live in a rural area where only houses have safety lights, and that's if you pay. I have a safety light. I actually have two. On one, out by the barn, I installed it myself because that was too far from the house for the um, electric company. They only install one by your home. Um, so I maintain that one and I pay the electric to run that one. The other security light that is up here by the house is maintained by them and I pay a flat, a flat fee in order to have that. Now, our security lights is as bright as street lights, son? No. no. But not they, by they a long shot. They yellow hue. They, they give a yellow hue. It's not like a light light. It's just no. a... Um, it's a really old, cheap flashlights. Everybody yes. knows what I'm talking about. It's a great, big, monstrous battery. Yes. But you stick in the bottom of them. They're a funky battery. You click them and on. 
It's that's a about all you get. Crappy light that just gives you enough to see where you yep. don't run into something. Yep. And that is what we have. So that is what everybody, it's common practice around here that everybody only has a security light and they're not top of the line. I don't even think they're LD, LTD, LD, LED. LED. I don't even think they're that. Um, so, because they actually take a light bulb, don't they? And they have a sensor uh, that comes on at night and goes off. So there's no seeing these black cows until um, you see the whites of their eyes, or the gleam of their eyes. Ta-da. Ta-da, there's Dad. Did you get it taken care of? No. Okay. And, uh, hang on, just a second. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Dad had to go and do some banking for RJ, correct? Yep. All right, where were we at? The cow. Um, you cannot see the cattle until they actually, until you see their eyes. They're black, it's pitch black, um, and it's not just black cattle, it's anything. Um, hard to even see a deer. You, you can, it's hard to even see a deer. And our day is really normally, really alert through there because there is a deer farm, correct? Yeah. So, he was watching, it was not his fault. Now, the state of Oklahoma says it is whose fault? Cattle owner's fault. Cattle owner's fault. We do not have free range laws here. So, it was failure to contain a nuisance animal. So, it becomes a nuisance when it causes property damage. And if he failed to contain it. And the truth was is that the young kid that was already there had called him. And he said, yeah, well, we'll be home. Then he got the call that, you know, one had been hit. And... Then he managed to show up pretty quick, didn't he? Yep. Then he got right out there. But he didn't come when he was needed. And so far, he has not called his insurance and got my truck taken care of either. So that's a whole nother issue, isn't it? Yep. But the good news is, what we found out from the other wreck is I have full coverage on my truck, too. So they're standing progressive. My insurance is standing by, and if he doesn't decide something by Monday, they'll step in. They'll take care of my truck, and then um, what's with Rascal? Um, they'll step in, do something with my truck, and then um, they will sue him. And I told him that that's how they would handle it, and he just kind of. He's, seem too worried. He doesn't seem too worried, and it's us without a vehicle. So, um, right now we're a farm with a borrowed truck, a car, and RJ got a truck, didn't you? A 1970s. No, it's 82. I looked. 82. 1982 Ford F100. Not even a Ford F150. No. It's Grandpa's old truck. It's Lee's Grandpa's old truck. So, it's your great-grandpa's old truck, right? Yep. So, I now have a sticker on my hat. Don't know if you can see that, but he stickered me. Um, so, anyway. Uh, it's not a pretty thing, but it's enough for hauling hay. It can get us the 11 miles to town and back. It can, you know, um, it'll do. So, um, Dad has his head scan. See if he's got a brain on Monday. Probably come back blank. Oh no, yours didn't. Your CT scan didn't. That was hilarious, but it did that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to podcast. Come on. Okay. Um but other than that, I've worked on all my fair entries. Should I show them my fair entry? <gasps> Say oh, something for next week. No, I got yeah, because if I win, it'll be next week. Um I do have one thing. Uh, Jay, hold down the fort. Talk to them. What else has been going on in the farmhouse? Hi, you guys. This is Bob. And this is Fred. Nice to meet you, Fred. Nice to meet you, Bob. Wait, you get this <laughs> This is Bob. This is Fred. This is nice to meet you, Bob. Okay, this is nice that's enough. Stop. I got backwards. Okay, so I went to 
a garage sale. I was actually oh, looking for, I was looking for a dehydrator because mine passed away, and it I doesn't help. I it's wasn't fifty years old. Hey, I actually wasn't going garage selling because I forgot that it was going to go on. We have a hundred mile. Uh, garage sale and they have a route and everybody on that route garage sales. It's a big deal. Um, I wasn't going to go. A friend of mine normally goes and she was going to look for me one. And I went down to the uh, little grocery store that we have. It's like a burger joint grocery store. It, it's not even a grocery store, okay? It's got the bare minimum of what you need. Sugar, bread, laundry soap, at an extremely overpriced rate. Yes. So, um, but they also serve lunch and stuff. I went down there because I had a headache and I wanted a, a pop. And, pop. um, gotcha. so I passed these garage sales and I thought, oh, I should stop and look for the dehydrator, which I did. I didn't find one, but there was this lady there that had yarn. And I took note, right? And I brought home like five dollars worth of yarn. Now, I'm pretty sure y'all know I don't need any more yarn, but I brought home this, and it was not in this condition when I did it. Um, it looked like little bubbly puffs, like this, like they had divided up to do for something. And anyway, as it turns out, with everything that was in the bag. This is 100% cashmere, and it was single ply, and I three plied it because this is the three ply, okay, and it, it's more of a DK or fingering weight, and it was like thread weight, like sewing thread weight. So I three plied it. There's like 800 yards of 100% cashmere. So I am tickled. With that, yes, I had to do a little work for it. Okay, it was really super. It's really super soft, and um, and, it's oh, a I know, but it paper. broke when I was plying it a lot. So there's knots hidden in there, but I don't care. It's for me. I'm gonna make me a scarf and a hat or something. Um, oh, and then I'll show you the other thing. Nope. Nice to meet you, Bob. Nice to meet you, friend. I got it right this time, guys. How was your okay. day, Bob? So then, it was good. How for, was your bread? For a dollar, okay? It this was is good. a dollar. Stop, son. For a dollar, I got. There is 1,000 yards. Um, let's see here. 2,900 yards for a dollar. And it's still hanked, like so. And it has mohair in it. It's not kid mohair, but hey, and it's very thin. Um, it's that thin. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I wasn't gonna let it sit there for a dollar. The rest of what she had was acrylic, correct? Anybody wanna buy it? Five dollars, ten dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. Oh, we got ten dollars, fifteen dollars, fifteen dollars. We're not even live. Fifteen, twenty dollars, twenty dollars. Wait, 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 we got better tape in here. Now we're up to fifty dollars. You're full of it. Did you think I wouldn't be? Anyway, so I have we'll this. We'll throw in the cashmere. Let's make it a hundred. No, I want to make something with that cashmere. So we'll go buy a cashmere and put it with a hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so I have my little Hank, and the ticket in there said it was mohair and something else. You know what it was? Oh, synthetic mohair. Oh, acrylic. It's half mohair, half acrylic. Oh. That's what it is. So, well, no, it didn't say percentages. It just said mohair acrylic. Yeah. So, it's not very soft. It's not like our mohair that's like super soft, but it has the extra twist on it because it's really super fine. So, that could be part of it too. But either way, I'm pretty happy with my little five dollars worth of yarn. I figure the cashmere is worth the five bucks. This is just an extra throw in. Um, so, yeah. And then I picked up some, just some white acrylic that she had because I can always use that. So, 
Anyway, uh, but that was my big find. All right, what do we have on the porch? Well, I guess that was a thing of flowers. Um, I have been working on those. Um, and that's about it. My fair stuff, and oh, I've done the shop, right? I have been making kids stuff for the shop, and I'm actually having fun crafting. It's been a while since I sat down and just truly crafted. You know, we'll get one of those trinkets and see if they can guess what it is when I made that. Is there any still on the table? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not even all on. I just finished them the other night. There's three different kinds. No, there's two different kinds up here. So, anyway, um, I just put together some stuff so that when the kids come to visit, they have something they can purchase too. It's not all about really expensive yarn that they can't, you know, buy. So, I've been working on those, and I finished up the last of them. Um, last night, I put the jump rings on them. And so, I have these. And it just, it's a pendant or zipper pull trinket. And then, I have some with little roses in it. And yes, they glitter. So, um, they glitter and shine. So... But I made those. You can't see it in there. It's a little mini plastic spoon from the Dollar Tree. Just saying. It's very lightweight. <laughs> right? Yeah, watch. You can see it all. Yeah. Well, I, it was with you on camera. Did you see that? I dropped it. It fell beside me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'll just go. Yeah. So, anyway, now that he's amusing himself. I think that is about all we have. Kind of big um, to be here. So. Well, that's why those zipper pulls are pendants. Oh. I thought we were going for earrings. So it'd be a pirate. Mm -hmm. Brrr. I got a rose in my ear. He's adored. Anyway. Alright. So we're going to get off, off of market. here. Off to market. Um, Can't skip over. I've been working in the shop, but not online. I have. I have soaps. I'm going to go back to making a soap a day for probably the next two weeks. But other than that, I haven't done a whole lot. So, but anyway, and I got that one fleece washing, but that's it. All right. So are we done? Yep. All right, guys, we will catch you next time. Leave comments below. Get on us. the flip side. Anything else that we left out that you want to hear? Um, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We're supposed to say that, and I'm I was stuck at it. Bob, huh. yeah, Bob and good. Fred are signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.